Well, hey everybody, Jimmy here from Michigan Out of Doors. If you'd like to get your hands on one of these cool black hoodies, you can always buy one on our website, but you can also get one free this week. We're gonna be doing a giveaway. All you have to do to be entered to win is comment, like, and subscribe this week's show. You'll be entered to win. Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by, by Tri-County Logging. Experienced in sustainable forestry practices, Tri-County Logging can help you manage your property by keeping your woods healthy and generate income. Serving Southern and Mid-Michigan for nearly 50 years, tricountylogging.com. Hi everybody, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny Silik, and we've got a great show lined up for you this week. I'll take you out on a hunt with a group of very special ladies who is chasing after some white-tailed deer. You won't want to miss that story. And Jimmy's got some other hunting action in store for us this week. Well, that's right, Jenny. We do have a couple more stories on this week's show. We're actually going to kick things off with a really cool goose hunt over water over in the Thumb. You won't want to miss that story. And Jordan Brown is going to take us to the banks of the Red Cedar to show you a brand new archery facility on Michigan State's campus. So lots of good stuff on this week's program. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze Dancing on the pine forest floor the autumn colors catch your eyes, here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors. What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988. Offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By Green Mark Equipment. Green Mark Equipment is a John Deere dealership network in southwest Michigan and northern Indiana. Green Mark provides sales and services to farmers, commercial businesses, large property owners, and homeowners. Information about pricing and products available can be found online at greenmarkequipment.com. By G5 Outdoors, makers of the Quest and Prime bows, manufactured and designed in Memphis, Michigan. G5 offers a line of archery bows, broadheads, and accessories on the web at g5outdoors.com. This moment brought to you by DTE's Clean Vision. back found me in a pretty cool goose camp somewhere in the middle of the thumb. These guys are tore up with goose hunting and started their own guide service, so when they said that they were on some birds, well, I made my way over for a mid-morning hunt. Uh, we're going to let them fly out of here, go in, get set up fast and quick, and wait for them to come back and hopefully shoot a pile. Yeah? Yeah. Shoot in there? Oh, yeah. We're looking at... <laughs> yeah, there's just a handful back in there. We're looking at quite a few in there right now. So, should be a good one. On a loaf hunt like what we were doing today, we were not set up before dark like most hunts. We waited for the geese using this spot to leave, then got in and set up behind them and waited for them to hopefully return. Uh, so we got some floaters out in front of us, probably, what are we putting out, probably two dozen? Two dozen floaters. We're gonna have these full bodies kind of on this bank right here, on this bank, and we're gonna set up right on this point, kind of like a peninsula out in this pit, so okay. hopefully we, should work perfect is what they were doing yesterday, so. The birds just left and they're coming back in a little while. Yep, they'll be here in about an hour, so. 
<laughs> well, our setup was looking pretty awesome. If the birds followed the script, this had the makings of a great hunt. We were still setting up, with the truck still here, when one lone goose had to come check us out. One very key aspect to today's hunt was right here. Sean Granger's lab was going to be a huge part of this hunt, and I asked Sean how he got hooked up with this fairly young group of guys. I met uh, the young guys back about oh, seven or eight years ago, boat ramp, hunting the public, and uh, we've been friends ever since now. So really? Yeah, it's been really awesome. Awesome. It's been a good deal, for you, sure. You do up from Ohio? Yes, sir, Toledo. What a boy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> As we worked some groups of birds, I was able to talk with some of these guys about how they got into guiding waterfowl hunters here in the Thumb. Uh, basically, me and my dad and my cousins you going to went me? out on a, a, a guided snow goose hunt in Missouri, and the guide, the whole time we were down there, just kept on telling me, he's like, you, you could do this, you could do this, you should do this. And on the ride back, me and my dad are talking about how we think we could do it. And once I got home, I talked to my cousin Steven about it, and... Within a matter of a few weeks, we decided we were going to try it and see how it worked out. And our first season was awesome for our first season. I mean, tons of success, awesome clients. I mean, it's been awesome, this trip so far. And this is our second season doing it. And I wouldn't trade anything in the world for it. So far, the birds were showing up in singles, which is good. The large flocks were still a ways off, and it gave the guys, well, a little time to warm up their guns. <laughs> Well, the shooting skills did get a little bit better, and the dog work was impressive. It's one of the best dogs I've seen in a long time. Yeah, that bird's hurt right there. Yeah, the bottom one? Yeah. The one's picked up. Is that the man? Ah, they were going to land farther out, but we shot him over top. Knocked about five out of there, so. We're stacking them. I think we're sitting at eight or nine right now, so. Just a waiting game. We'll see where it goes. guess. Uh, 1158 is probably going to be closer to like that six, seven years old because about every year they were hopping up a prefix on the third number. So like 68 would have been the next year most likely, 78 and then on, so on and so on. But it's probably a six or seven year old. May, maybe eight. You got a few on your neck there too, eh? Just a few. Nice. Is that good? Oh, come on. Is there any certain method to your madness when you're trying to call these in? It's just trying to, it's really just trying to convince them to work right where we want them to and finish right where we want them to. But I mean, with early season and with how big this, this pond is, it's, it's really hard to, to get the birds to finish right where you want them to. So you just got to work with, work with the opportunities that you have and, and make the most of it. I have to say doing a hunt over water, well, that is pretty special. Most of the goose hunts that we do in September are layout field hunts, so this was a very nice change of pace. It was also pretty cool that most of these guys are in their 20s or early 30s. We hear all the time that hunter numbers are not what they used to be. Well, true or not, there are still a lot of younger hunters keeping the traditions alive and well. We only had a bird or two to go, so we double checked our count. It was pretty impressive to me that these guys basically hunt the entire thumb of Michigan. Pretty much. I'd say an hour and a half in every direction for scouting and stuff. I mean, 
I'm not gonna not have birds for clients. That's the biggest thing. I mean, these guys want to go and shoot birds. I'm gonna at least get them on a field that has birds in them. That's the big thing. So that's pretty much the whole thumb then? Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah, I mean, this spot in particular is almost two hours from our house, so that's yeah, we'll put the miles on to get smiles. <laughs> <laughs> Well, today could not have gone much better. Our blind was perfect. The birds cooperated for the most part. After some early misses, the guys shot well, and oh yeah, the biscuits and gravy in the blind, well, that was one heck of a nice meal. As we move into October now, and deer and small game are underway, and the salmon move up into the rivers, there is so much to do in our great state. But if for some reason you find yourself near the thumb, a call to these guys at Pure Michigan Outfitters might be worth your time. That is, if you love to hunt waterfowl and eat biscuits and gravy. What a day we had here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Heck of a good time. Passing Along the Heritage is a nonprofit organization right here in our great state of Michigan that helps folks get out into the woods hunting and fishing that might not otherwise have the chance to do so. Here at Double D Ranch near the town of Lake, something amazing happens for a couple of weeks every fall. The PATH Foundation invites some very special folks here to hunt for whitetails. The hunters and their families come to enjoy the hunt and relax at this beautiful ranch, and the PATH Foundation volunteers come to serve as guides on the hunt. This year I'd be following Deanna Chenoweth on the hunt. Deanna is an injured Army veteran and first-time hunter. No one would ever know, but I actually, when I was doing Army training, I was doing combatives, so that's pretty much just like how the Army teaches you to fight, like hand-to-hand -hand combat and I actually got dropped on my head while in a guard position. And I actually ended up having a couple of herniated discs and literally three years ago, I couldn't turn my head more than five degrees without being in excruciating pain. So thank God I, over the past four years, have been able to have a lot of recovery, but definitely notice it, um, not where I used to be, but um, it was a huge blessing that I didn't like break my neck and that I didn't require surgery or anything like that. Deanna is recovering nicely and was looking forward to the hunt. The back porch of the lodge is a perfect place for viewing wildlife. It is so crazy that this is only two and a half hours away from Detroit. You would never know in a million years. I mean, it's just beautiful. I have never seen something that is so open and gorgeous and just makes you kind of feel connected to the land and I really love it. You can tell that they just redid it and they have the antlers everywhere. They have all of their trophy pieces in there and it's, it's just great. I'm so excited to see how the hunt goes. We kind of designed it in mind with the PATH Foundation with the hunts for handicapped, wounded warriors, stuff like that. Everything is handicap accessible here. Um, doesn't matter from they come in the garage to the rooms to the great room out on the patio. It's all accessible for wheelchairs. There's no barriers here. And that's how we kind of tried to create it, was there's no barriers. We've got five hunters out here this year. It's all women's group again. Um, normally we do four, but we're doing five. Uh, everybody's getting ready to head out. Um, we're gonna try and get it done hopefully a little earlier tonight because we've got a band coming in tonight to entertain everybody. It's gonna be a great night. But uh, the plan is to go out. We're gonna sit on an alfalfa field. We just planted out here about three or four months ago and uh, hopefully we get some deer coming in and um, we'll see what happens. All right, so we're going with Deanna and then where are some other people gonna be sitting? We've got, uh, there's uh, there's four brand new alfalfa fields here. We've got everybody set up on alfalfa fields and we have one blind in the back that's by a kind of the, right next to the swamp. And there's a pond out there and they come out there sometimes to the pond. So that's where the, on the alfalfa fields mainly because that's where all the animals are. Everybody's on the fields. Deanna and Dennis were sitting over this beautiful alfalfa field in an elevated blind with a bird's eye view of the place. Being out on her very first hunt, Deanna was just taking it all in and hoping she could slow down time for just a little bit while she was here as she spotted the first deer in the field. I was actually talking to my father-in-law who's here with me and I was saying that if the guide tells me to shoot the first one that's there, I'm like, I'm probably gonna take a minute just to like take it in because I've never seen a buck the size that it sounds like they have here. So I think it's just gonna be awesome to see God's creation in action and be able to 
just admire it for a minute, honestly. I think it's going to be great. Well, Deanna's plan to sit back and take it all in didn't last long. The deer were starting to filter out of the swamp and into the alfalfa, and a couple of nice bucks were making their way into range. smoked him. Oh, he, yeah, that's a perfect shot. You smoked him. Oh, nice shot. Oh my gosh. Woo. <laughs> Here, let, let, let me get this out of the way here for you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what did you oh my gosh. Do? I just shot my first deer ever. <laughs> oh my gosh. Great job, great job. <laughs> that was a perfect shot too. Thank you did you. exactly what you're supposed to do. Thank you. Oh, Tell me what happened. Me. Tell me what was going through your head. Well, there were two of them, so I didn't know which one to go for. And then the does clear out of the way, the other one did as well. And then that one just, just wanted to hold, take my breath for a second, be calm, and then go in for the shot. And it worked. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's the most exciting thing I've ever done. They came in quick, didn't they? They did. That was, like, not long at all. <laughs> it's not a very long waiting period. It's, like, the coolest thing ever. Oh, my gosh. Awesome. That's amazing. Congrats. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. I'm so happy to get to share it with you guys. <laughs> Thank you for making this possible. <laughs> You're welcome. There you go. Nice job on the, uh, the feed delivery yes, there. Hey. Awesome. Great job. Oh, so good. So happy for you. Oh That's God. the best. So the oh best God. ever. Oh. <laughs> I have so much adrenaline, and now that I'm out in the open, I can get it out. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. All right, oh well, let's God, see this awesome. thing. Where is it? Over there. Oh, my. All right, let's go find it. <laughs> is it a nice one? Even though Dennis saw the buck fall in the tall grass at the edge of the field, the guys used this as a teaching opportunity to show Deanna how to follow a blood trail to find her deer. After a quick and easy tracking job, Deanna was about to put her hands on her very first whitetail buck, a moment she will surely never forget. Okay. Beautiful shot, Beautiful too. Shot. Wow. Beautiful buck. Deanna. Look how thick it is. Oh, my word. Wow. Oh, okay. <laughs> how, what do I, like, literally just lift its yeah. little yeah. head? Yeah. Oh, Woo. What do you think? This is crazy. Oh, my God. Oh my gosh, I just like don't even know what to say. It's like just crazy. Oh my gosh. You gonna wow. get in there with it? Sure. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. What a nice wow. shot. Look, look, like, look how thick it is. Oh my gosh, wow. that's crazy. That is so nice. So, so good. Oh my gosh. Beautiful. Just, what do you think absolute, of your Oh, absolutely beautiful. Couldn't be more proud. <laughs> She's the best. That's great. So good. So, wow. so good. Good job. It's heavy. Yeah. Oh my yeah. Gosh. That's so great. What a great experience for Deanna. The guys loaded up the buck and were heading back to the ranch when we got word that Megan Freeman had also harvested a buck, so we stopped by to check it out. Megan was hunting another one of those alfalfa fields and ended up dropping a bruiser right in his tracks. What happened out there? Uh, just dropped him. Yeah. <laughs> cool. How did it happen? Oh, he came walking up the creek here. And two other ones kept getting in the way, so we had to keep waiting for them to move on. And 
finally he moved. He was out by himself, and he told me to take the shot, and he dropped him in his tracks. Cool. Are you shaking still? Was it? Yeah, a little bit. All right. Awesome. <laughs> now, where are you from? Uh, southern Indiana. Okay. Back at camp, the celebration was off to a great start with a time-honored initiation for the successful hunters, a food truck with great food, and the family tradition band to entertain the ladies and their families tonight. A very special thanks to the Path Foundation and Double D Ranch for creating these memories of a lifetime for all the ladies who took part in the hunt. They are truly passing along the heritage right here in Michigan's Out of Doors. We wrap up this week's show over in East Lansing where I was able to spend a day at a really cool archery facility located right on Michigan State's campus. So we're at uh, Michigan State University here at the Demmer Shooting Facility. Um, we've been around for quite a few years, but over the last couple years due to COVID and some other things, we've actually been, you know, shut down for a little bit, but um, Archie's really been carrying us. We've got a great junior program. Um, we got some awesome ranges out here and um, um, we're transitioning to archery only. We've got some great indoor facilities. We've got a couple uh, video ranges that are going to be installed soon um, and also approximately a 25 to maybe 30 yard indoor range as well. Our three uh, outdoor ranges here, uh, you can shoot out to over 100 meters on two of them. Um, and then uh, we also have a junior setup and eventually we'll have our 3D walking course back in as well. The Denver Center is home to a wide variety of shooters. Not only is it open to the public, but it's also home to the Michigan State shooting teams and they have a junior program as well. The MSU shooting teams are, uh, there's uh, men's and women's club teams and they're down here for most of the year. We have some of the shooters stay for the entire summer and so they're here literally year-round practicing shooting using a facility. Um, they use this kind of as their home base to travel all over the country and participate in all the tournaments um, really all over the U.S. And then we also offer the junior shooters program which uh, coach Gwen Bennett, he's one of the best coaches in the entire country, is here working with them. Um, he actually coaches both the college students and the junior shooters. Uh, and with the junior program, um, we have some of the best junior shooters in the country, actually. One of our shooters here um, is recently named the uh, ASA Michigan Shooter of the Year. So um, it's pretty exciting. We've got a lot of great shooters at the facility. A bulk of the shooters on the range today were part of the junior program, and it was pretty cool to see so many young kids excited about the sport of archery. Our program is called Junior Olympic Archery Development. We call it JOAD. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a program through USA Archery, which is the National Governing Board of uh, Archery for the Olympics. And we teach these, we're teaching these kids a lot of the same systems we use at the Olympic Training Center, uh, along with mental management, uh, physical fitness, and uh, making the whole athlete, you know. We have a lot, a diverse group of kids, and uh, we're really happy with, with the way our program's going. Well, a lot of kids get started at the beginning, like the, the young ones. We want them just getting out shooting the bow, having positive experience with archery. And then we introduce them to like national training system, which is the same system, again, we use at the Olympic Training Center. That's a modified version of it, but yeah, we, we do that. And then uh, a lot of the kids will just basically keep shooting tournaments and going to tournaments throughout the country. And, and uh, whether or not it's shooting like scholastic 3D archery, uh, National Archery Schools program, uh, we, we do it all here at the Denver Center. When it comes to shooting well on the course, Glenn says it's all about good shooting form and developing a process. But basically shooting form, we want the kids to shoot within a, a process. Uh, we, we try to get them so they're not so much goal oriented as much as they are process oriented. We want them to develop the process, we give them like the, the steps we like to go through 
and then uh, you know bullet points, and then they just got to modify that version. So we, they start really shooting really good, excellent form and stuff like that. We like to have the well-rounded archer where they can go, they can shoot spots, they can shoot anything. Uh, we just want to make sure the kids are having fun and uh, doing the correct things, living, living life really good. If you're interested in learning more about the Demmer Center, they are holding a grand reopening on October 9th and shooting will be free to the public. Special thanks to Casey and Glenn for showing me around and for all they do to help promote the sport of archery. Thanks so much for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you stay tuned in upcoming weeks. It's that time of year. We've got cameras rolling in just about every corner of the state. If you'd like to see where we are and where we're headed next, you can always check us out online. Well, that's right, Jenny. Online is a good way to kind of keep tabs on us. You can do that through our website, our different social media platforms, as well as YouTube. Lots of places you can be checking us out. Make sure that you are joining us over the next several weeks. It is a great time of the year to be a sportsman here in the state of Michigan. So much stuff going on. We'll have cameras all around the state. And hey, if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by... Do you dream of somewhere bigger than your backyard? You can get there with Greenstone. Whether you want to hunt, fish, hike, or just watch the sunset, we're ready to help you own your place in the great outdoors. To learn more, visit GreenstoneFCS.com. By Alta Equipment Company, providing sales, rentals, service, and parts because uptime matters. From earth moving to landscaping and light construction, Alta offers over 50 brands across seven Michigan locations to serve you. More information online or 844-GO-ALTA. By Jay Sporting Goods, with locations in Clare and Gaylord. Jay's has been serving the Michigan outdoor enthusiasts since 1971 with a wide variety of outdoor products. The gear, the knowledge, the tradition of Jay's. On the web at jaysportinggoods.com. Closed captioning provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck, deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want to fire away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. Ask where I'm from and I'll show you my hands. Lord above, I love this land. I am a Down to St. Joe, Kalamazoo, East to Monroe, to St. Marie and back again. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan 